Yeah, we got uh, 20,000 onions, about four rows of onions put it in by sea. We'll use them as scallions as they come up. Come visit our corn maze, September 23rd through October 29th. We got carrots, kurabi, beets, golden beets, sugar snap edible pod peas, strawberries. We got organic garlic going on, raspberries, blueberries. We got to have everything in a while. And we're located at 175 East Center Street in West Bridgewater, Mass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the September 25th, 2017 Board of Selectmen meeting. And we will be standing to say the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we do have an announcement tonight. The uh, fall special town meeting will be held on October 24th of this year at 7 p.m. at the Pembroke High School, School at 80 Learning Lane. And the first thing up on the agenda would be the surplus property auction, um, action auction results announced. Um, let me see. Do you want to add to reason? Um, well, that's all right. I don't know. Okay. You see remember. the one that uh, Sabrina gave us? Yeah, I just saw that, yeah. Okay, um, item number one was a uh, 2005 Ford Crown Victoria. And uh, Jeannie Bautier of 81 Lesnick Road, Goffstown, New Hampshire. Got that. Um, Ve item number two is a vehicle of 2007 Ford Crown Vic. The same person got that for $253. Item number three is the same person for a 1999 Chevy 2500 4x4. And she bid $1,259. Item number four was Corkery Tractor, $187, and they live at Turnpike Street in Canton. And item number five was a 2007 Ford Eldorado E350 bus, and Kevin Gay uh, paid $571 for that, and he has a telephone number here, no address. So that would be the auction. Chairman, I think the board would vote to accept those uh, bids. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I would move that we accept the um, five high bids um, that they were read. Second. Any um, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Anybody opposed? So it'll be five to zero. Um, please note that this meeting is being uh, made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Channel Government Access Channel 15 and is being recorded for broad broadcast in future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. Uh, first board action item is to accept the resignation of Kyle Stenstrom from the Conservation Commission. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I would move to accept the resignation of Kyle Stenstrom from the Conservation <coughs> Commission effective immediately. Second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And anybody opposed? Not opposed. Be five to zero. Consider the um, vote to appoint Sharon Simon of 73 Furnace Lane to the Conservation Commission. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a correction. It is Sandra. 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 Forgive me, I'm sorry. 
Uh, you know, I noticed that when I read it, and, um, <laughs> and I still read it right off of the paper. <laughs> I, I, I actually know her, and I said, her name isn't Sharon, it's Sandra. <laughs> Sandra Simon, 73 Furnace Lane. Um, and we have a motion to accept that. Motion made and seconded. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Very good. There was one other error that you made in there too, and I can't remember what it is, but it's um, there is there is another one. Hope he doesn't remember. Oh, that's course. Vote to accept the minutes of September 18th, 2017. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move uh, that the board accept the minutes of the selectmen's meeting of <laughs> September 18th, 2017, as written. Second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Three, five to zero. Um, next thing up is to review the warrant articles for recommendations. <coughs> all right, Mr. Chairman, um, I got a spreadsheet for the board uh, to look at. Basically, what I'd like to do is explain um, the uh, report by the town of, uh, town of Hampton regarding um, funding sources and, and monies that are going to be available. Um, it, uh, to summarize Mike's uh, report of the town of Hampton, which is on the uh, inside the first page of the warrant, <coughs> um, he is uh, reporting that there will be $1.9 million in free cash and that there are two required items uh, that will need to be funded. Um, one will be the snow and ice deficit, which is Article 3, and also Article 6, which is funding the firefighters contract for FY17 and 18. And the uh, snow and ice deficit is 423,678, and the firefighters contract is 173,191, which leaves a balance <coughs> of 1.3 million dollars available to spend. Now, Mike is recommending to the board that 500,000 dollars be set aside from the free cash number for the Springtown meeting, uh, that there may be a, a need to have that extra cash available to not only fund the special town meeting within the annual, but also maybe to balance the FY819 budget going forward. So in my spreadsheet to the board, <clears throat> that would leave about $803,131 available now, Mike is also recommending that the following uh, articles be funded. That would be Article 4, which is to create a workers' compensation insurance fund, and he wishes to uh, allocate 25000 of that. Article 5 is to fund appropriations to funds that already exist. One is the other post-employment benefit account. And as you can see from the second sheet in the handout that I have for tonight, <coughs> Mike is recommending that $125,000, uh, no, $100,000 go to the OPED fund, $125,000 go to the separation pay fund, $25,000 to the special injury leave fund, and 25000 to the stabilization fund. And of course, you see what the balance is in, in those accounts, the four existing accounts and the new one that Mike is uh, suggesting that the uh, board and town meeting create. So that being said, then that would leave, um, excuse me, then we go to articles 8, 9, and 10 in the warrant. 
which is to fund the three pond cleanup projects, Abama, Furnace, and Oldham. In 8, 9, and 10, come to a total of $67,500. And Article 16, which finalizes the payment to the Open Space Fund uh, for the, the acquisition of the uh, Thor property to settle a lawsuit several years ago. <clears throat> so with those four items, uh, we are suggesting to the board that Article 4 be funded for 25000 Article 5 be funded for 275000 Articles 8, 9, and 10, a combined 67500 and Article 16, $5,000. That leaves available for Article 1 and Article 16, I think it's 16, no, 14. <clears throat> that would leave, <clears throat> there would be uh, 430,631 available for Article 1, which has funding requests of 652,000. And the other article, which is Article 14, uh, proposed by the police chief of 76,828. So that leaves a funding deficit of Two hundred and ninety-eight thousand eight hundred and ninety-one. My apologies for the red ink that uh, didn't uh, show up on the uh, on the copies of the spreadsheet. So, Article One uh, and Article Fourteen, I'll be discussing with the various department heads to see how we can fit the request that they have into the monies that are available. Uh, does anybody have any questions about uh, this presentation regarding free cash? Now, we have two other available funds. One is overlay surplus, which is uh, uh, derived from monies that are available in the Board of Assessors. And we are proposing that the Assessors GIS Police radios and police uh, ballistic vests are funded from overlay surplus to the tune of 62500 And then the People GIS management system proposed by the Water Department is to be funded by water surplus to the tune of $35,000. So there's two $35,000 ones there, the water surplus and then people GIS, so is that the same? It's the same. That's the same, okay. It's, the, the funding source is water surplus, uh, and that, that will fund that people GIS system that is being proposed by the water department. So um, what's the other, in other words, the assessor, <coughs> assessor GIS is asking for 15000 Right, and it's going to be paid for by overlay surplus. Okay. The available money in overlay, overlay surplus is 62.5, and those three items that are listed below it will be paid for by the overlay surplus. Okay. So then the water surplus, how come that's 35 if they're only asking for 15? Mm -hmm. what? No, it's 35. There's two different GISs. Item oh, 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 okay. All right. One oh, it's the assessor's GIS and the people's GIS. Okay. That's All right. right. All right. That makes sense. Huh? All right. Thank you. Are we getting the police chief everything he asked for? Not yet. I think that's something that we're going to be discussing with the department heads between now and your meeting next Monday when you have to finalize the warrant. And I think Article 1 is the one that's out there. Some departments will receive some of what they're requesting. Um, others may not receive anything. Um, but we want to be able to fit that uh, almost $700,000 worth of request into 430000 That's if the board chooses not to do 
some of the things that are being recommended by the town account. So if you wanted to free up some money, you could not fund some of the articles that are being proposed and not have as much in savings as Mr. Buckley is proposing for the spring. But obviously, uh, town accountant has really researched this, and um, you know, and, and is not one to uh, make uh, recommendations, uh, uh, you know, haphazard. Given this a lot of thought. Yeah, I I agree with that. After talking to Mr. Buckley and looking at these proposals, I think it's very prudent and wise to make the investments in our savings account as he recommends. Mm -hmm. And Matthew, I think some of the things that are being proposed by the department heads that you see in Article 1 in the warrant can be put off to the sprint. In fact, I am recommending that the first item in Article 1, which is uh, an irrigation for the town green, be put off till the spring because we wouldn't be able to do anything in the winter anyway. So that's 47000 right off the get-go. And so I'll be talking with the library director about her uh, carpet repair and replacement of 128000 I'll be talking to um, the police. Most of the police department's requests are, are, are smaller and have already been, and the larger ones have been funded by um, the uh, uh, overlay surplus. I think it's the fire department that I'll be talking with the chief about about those requests that he has and how he needs to prioritize them. He already told me verbally at a meeting that I had about what his number one uh, priority was and uh, so I want to talk to him about that. And the fact that one of the, the, the largest items that is in um, the uh, fire department's request is the uh, pumper, which, which he's asking for 600000 um, We're thinking that we may come back with a smaller request for a mini pupper, one that he has purchased before and will be delivered in October. And uh, that seems to be the, the, the current um, wave of the future for fire departments by getting these smaller pumpers um, that, are, that have less capacity for water and the hose that they carry is probably about half as long as the one in, in a larger pumper, but they actually are the kind of equipment that could easily go into somebody's driveway to fight a fire, as opposed to the other ones that are, you know, the, the larger ones that he's being proposed. So um, I would think that, you know, we will be uh, certainly, uh, you know, prioritizing, you know, Article 1 for your review um, next Monday. Also want to add that number three, in Article 1, the IT conversion, town, school, accounting functions, uh, that number is coming in at $150,000. It's a very high priority. The school system and the town accountant's office, this will merge both the accounting systems into one. Uh, it'll be paid for half by the school and half by uh, the uh, town department. Also, it, while we're talking about this category, uh, this is a, a project that will be eligible under the Community Compact Program. Uh, as you know from uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, being in front of uh, the, uh, the board and, and, and other, eight, uh, other committees that uh, these, this is one of three pots of money that are available. And uh, we're hoping that um, even though the maximum grant's 200000 uh, we think that it would be a little bit more competitive if, if we ask for something, you know, under the hundred thousand range, so, um, but that will be something that hopefully, you know, will be contingent upon the town receiving a grant for that, and that we we wouldn't have to spend that entire hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's what I was going to suggest, and you, <laughs> and you uh, you already had that, but that's I mean that's something we talked about before on right. that IT thing. So it, hopefully, we can get that as a uh, as a grant. Uh, Mr. Chairman, a question for Ed. Uh, so these numbers that we're looking at right now, 
are going to show up with a $300,000 shortfall because we're going to accept the uh, town accountant's financial plan, which is to hold back a half a million dollars. Correct. So next week, you might have, well, you'll definitely have some changes to this in some way, in some form. Right. So we may not have that $300,000 deficit. We may drop some of the items. We may change some of the items. Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, it, 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 you can go either way. You can accept the town accountant's recommendation and repair back Article 1 to fit with what's available in funds. Or you could chip away at some of the things that Mike has suggesting, especially in Article 5, which is uh, putting aside 275000 in those five accounts. So um, that's a decision that the boards, you know, will have to make. Um, right now, the recommendation of the town accountant and the town administrator is to go with the town accountant's recommendation, and then we will try to fit Article 1 into available funds. Well, I last week when we had the town accountant give us his plan, uh, I don't think we took an official vote to accept that, but I would certainly agree with Matthew's assessment that that made a lot of sense to me personally. And uh, I would like to stick with that if we possibly could. But I know we need more information for next Monday night. Thank you. Well, that being said, I think now the board could uh, maybe act on recommendations for several of the other articles that are uh, before the board this evening, starting with Article 2. <coughs> Article 2 just it combines the four departments of the Board of Health, the Conservation, the uh, Building Department and the Zoning Board of Appeals into the Department of Municipal Inspections that was created by town meeting and approved by the Attorney General and has, you know, taken effect, um, you know, on September the 18th, actually uh, September 17th officially. Um, and this was combined all these salaries into one department. Have a question? So, Ed, people on town meeting floor <clears throat> will have the, the, the first question <coughs> that should come to their mind is, uh, do these monies represent uh, raises with a vote of this article? Nope. This is all money that was voted on by town meeting in the spring. I know that it's important for the public. Right. right. It, so, in other words, the, the dollar amount to Article 2 is nothing. I'm going to move that we support Article 2. Second. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of Article 2? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? That's Article it. 3 is <coughs> one of the required uh, articles, uh, and this will be to fund the snow and ice deficit of 423678 Mr. Chairman, I would move that the Board uh, supports Article 3. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor for Article 3? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Yeah, I have it. Uh, Article 4 is uh, to create a new workers' compensation insurance fund. Um, this would um, be added. Uh, right now, we don't have anything in that, and this would allow the town to have money set aside that normally would come out of uh, the insurance premiums that we pay, and then that drives the cost of the workers' comp number up. And I believe Sabrina gave me the information today that our workers' comp premium is in excess of $280,000. And uh, hopefully the plan is to have this fund set aside that, so that the town could pay smaller claims and not have to hit the, uh, the insurance, uh, the workers' compensation insurance, um, which actually drives the price of the premiums up now. The premium for FY18 is around 250000 so we did 
see a reduction of 30,000 uh, since uh, FY17. Um, but as we, as we know that every year we pay the premium up front in July and then they do an audit of the salaries of everybody that is not covered by fire and police. So if you work for the town of Pembroke, you're either covered under Chapter 111F, which is fire and police, or you're covered under workers' compensation. So this is a movement to try to lower those premiums by setting aside a certain part of money, uh, made it 25000 for this workers' compensation fund. Well, it's always good to lower premiums. That's correct. It's uh, our insurance premiums total around 660000 a year for everything. I would move favorable action on um, Article uh, 4. Second. Article 5 is uh, what I talked about earlier. Vote on that. Do, you need a, do you need a vote on that? Please. Article 4. Yep. Um, any other questions or comments? I'd just like to comment that this is a, a recommendation from the town accountant. Um, hearing none, um, other than what uh, Lou Stone said on Article 4, uh, favorable recommendation for town meeting. Uh, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Article 4 will be 5 to 0 for favorable action. All right, Article 5 is, uh, as you see, um, it deals with uh, funding the OPED Trust Fund, Separation Pay Benefits Fund, Special Injury Relief Fund, and the Stabilization Fund. And uh, that Article 5 totals uh, $275,000. Mr. Chairman, I would move that the Board support Article 5 as proposed by the Town Accountant. Second for discussion. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to, if we can, sub in um, the cruiser ballistic kits for the police department at $1,900 and take that off the line of um, separation pay benefits of 125. That'll change it to 123.1. The separation pay would be 1231. Right. And for police department. So you'll see on article under article one, it was nineteen hundred dollars for a um, ballistics kit. with the patrol rifle, $1,900. Right. And that's in uh, Article 5. I understand what you're you're looking for and, and um, the support taking for Peter to pay Paul, uh, especially in what you're asking. The only trouble is uh, Article 1 is its own separate entity and uh, if, if it was a single article, uh, it would it'd be easy to do the transfer, like pull it out of this article for another article, but because one has so many monies involved, uh, I just don't know about the logistics of that, so I'd like to talk about it, maybe ask Ed. Yeah, I mean, if, you know, if the board votes to, to uh, transfer or at least reduce the amount of money going into the separation pay fund, and making sure that that $1,900 line item in Article 1 is funded, that's fine. I mean, that uh, now I have direction from the board as to what the board wants to do, and we'll just make sure that the $1,900 is funded in Article 1. Yeah, and simple it, as that. And it, it'd be incumbent, all I'm saying, Arthur, is it, it's incumbent on us to make sure that people know that we, no matter what we do on Article 1, we stand firm on, on this one line item, and we've already allocated the money and pulled it out of another article. So well, we haven't yet. But we haven't yet, but it, in mm -hmm. other words, we're the ones going to really have to speak to it. 
more than just in this meeting tonight is what I'm getting at. Yeah, I'm prepared to speak to it. Okay. So we have so on Article 5. So on, on uh, vote. Article 5. Monday, Article 5. <coughs> so that would reduce the 275. You're by $1,900, whatever that is. By $1,900. So $123,100. There you go. $123,100. Okay. Well, that's for separation pay. Fine. Okay. Right. Right. So, so Article 5, you're going to fund 25000 I mean, 100000 for the OPED. One twenty-three, one for the separation pay, twenty-five thousand for special injury leave, twenty-five thousand for stabilization. That's right. right. Any other questions or comments about it? Hearing none, then all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So we have it. All right. Article six funds the uh, firefighters' contract to the tune of one hundred seventy-three thousand one ninety-one. I would move favorable action. Second. Questions or comments? There are none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, Article 7. Uh, this is the special events bylaw. I would move favorable action by the board on Article 7. Is this the same article that we submitted last year? Yes, in uh, in a general answer, yes. There is some changes in the body of it, trying to make it clearer, and uh, so it could be uh, completely understood by the body. But it's uh, doing the same thing as last year's article. Well, I mm -hmm. think we we got the message last year. I thought um, that people were in favor of. They felt it was meddlesome on our part to be um, asking them for information on events. I mean, they they have a process now, although it's not a flawless one. Yeah, I think that's a problem. Why the chief wanted it because it's. Um, I would recommend, um, my personal feeling is that I would recommend the bylaw. This, this only helps uh, uh, alleviate any problems that, that has arise so um, the general public knows what's going on with it. So I, don't, I don't think that the police are really uh, entering into special events. I mean, they do a lot of that now. Um, this just makes it clearer, that's all. It's a public safety issue. So. I would be for it. As a matter of formality, I'll second it for discussion. Uh, any discussion? Yeah. Well, there was no second. We were just talking about it. Uh, so I just want to get that out of the way. Okay. So one of the things that I'm not sure that I see in, in this uh, proposed article, the way it's written, is how does one know when to apply? What's the impotence for someone to apply? What, how, does the, how does the general public uh, uh, receive direction on no one to apply for a special events permit? If they're, if they're having a, a, a block party that's um, a, a well, large gathering at their house that, 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 that'll have a, a DJ, <coughs> how does the public know when to call the selectman and to get a permit? Well, I think it says it in the in the second paragraph. It talks about occurs on a public way, or on or on public property. So, if it's public property or a public way, this is when you have to do it. So, currently now, what happens is if somebody wants to close off a particular road, then they call the board of selectmen and say we want to close a certain street uh, for a certain event. So, this helps the Police department um, monitor that and and take care of it. So you should know that. So it actually comes on the anti-noise bylaw too, uh, and unauthorized parking of vehicles. So I think it only helps. It doesn't. Uh, I don't think it's hurting anybody. So 
I mean, they already applied to the selectmen now in order to have a road closure. So that would be a special event. So. So yeah, I understand that, and that's that. It should be easy enough to understand when you're closing a public public roadway. Uh, but what of what of a large party that uh, is self DJ just has a, a nice bow speaker in the backyard? Like, it, and then what happens if it if it gets large enough that someone calls the police? The police show up to the door and say, "Hey, you never went through this permit process." What, what's the what's the teeth to that? What's the is there a punishment to that? Other than shutting down the party, I suppose. Well, my impression of town meetings uh, answer to this in the vote, and I supported it last year, but it seems that they thought we were overreaching a little bit, and um, you know you've got disturbing the peace regulations and things that you can fall back on, uh, you know, parking is an issue, obviously, in most streets in the town because we don't have uh, sidewalks in most places, so, uh, I don't know, I, I just, I, I think it wasn't greeted with a warm feeling last year, and I don't know that the, the public has changed their mind. I don't want to stand in the way of it if the board wants to move it, but. Yeah, but I have questions about it too, especially especially the sentiment of town from town meeting last last spring. Why don't we ask the chief to come in and explain it then, if it's different from last year, and maybe he can. Uh, well, would you mind if I took a stab at it? Sure. Go ahead. The differences from last year. Um, last year, the concerns that most folks at town meeting had, or at least expressed, were the facts that a private party could be subject or uh, some other unknown or variable. In this particular version, the selectmen have reacted to that by citing two very specific things that people do wind up encountering the police when they have a party. And that's if they're in violation of the anti-noise bylaw or in violation of the unauthorized parking of motor vehicles bylaw. And those would be the two triggers for a resident at their home to say, you know, I should probably reach out and get a waiver, get a permit get the approval to have this band outside or DJ outside, inside their home, they're not going to be in violation of the anti-noise bylaw. And if they're going to have excessive attendance, they may have on-street parking that's unauthorized parking of motor vehicles in our bylaws. Those would be the times they would encounter the police. Um, and since there was very much a concern at town meeting about overreaching, and if you remember, there was a section in the first one about putting it on the website and making it, well, that's all been removed because it's just not necessary. The only times the Board of Selectmen would see someone coming is if they want a road closure, if they were going to be potentially violating the anti-noise bylaw, or if they were gonna have unauthorized parking of motor vehicles in violation of section 16 of article 20. Theoretically, that were the, those were the changes that this has tried to address so that people in their homes are having birthday parties and private ceremonies are not going to be done. But that doesn't mean anyone will be more comfortable with it, but those were the changes that you guys responded to that were stated at the last time. Thank for you. whatever it's worth. <clears throat> I did have uh, one other question, though, that someone may bring up. might not be my... My question, but it's a question that I, I suspect some folks will, would have, is, is has this is this a big enough issue that requires a, a, a zoning bylaw? I mean, has the, there been violations in the past that necessitated this? That's a question I have. And someone may have. Probably something that the chief may be able to. Uh, I, I mean, mean, does I'm this sure occur often enough to really need a, a bylaw change? I don't, I don't know why he would put an article forward that he didn't think that was needed. And he definitely thought it was needed last year and then changed it for, for what the townspeople didn't like. And uh, I think he should at least be given the, the opportunity um, to speak about it, either to us or to the town meeting, that, um, that this article go forward for his reasons. So. Evidently, he spent enough time and effort into changing it. So, 
see if he's available next Monday night. We can push this to next, next meeting. Yeah, that would be, I, I, I mean, would, that would be my uh, recommendation. Table uh, for one week then. Second. All those in favor of table one week? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? I don't have, in, in just an aside, I don't have an issue with this remaining on the warrant uh, so the town meeting can vote on it. But I bring up questions that I anticipate that people at town meeting would have. Yeah, I would agree with Dan. I wouldn't mm -hmm. want to see it uh, dumped off the warrant. But I anticipate we'll run into the same type of opposition that we ran into. You know, and people, you know, tending to exaggerate the circumstances and so forth. Well, we are very careful not to add birthdays in here. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, Article 8. Article 8. Forward. Uh, this is uh, uh, appropriating $8,000 to uh, <coughs> treat the high drill at Hagamak Pond. Move favorable action. Second. Any questions or comments? I just want to say that this is very important to the sustainability of this pond. Hydrilla is a very uh, invasive species that kills off the naturally occurring species in the pond. So that's why this is so important. You're absolutely right. I didn't know that until I investigated it. That's why I thought it would be important to say. Yeah, this You're is right. about the... 50 years or so that we've had it, and the uh, hydrilla is down to next to nothing at this point. So we may not have to treat it the following year. But it's important, um, just for the reasons you stated, that um, it's an invasive weed and it, it did a lot of damage when it was um, in its heyday. Well, we spent a lot of money on it so far too, and it's you know, to quit now would only yeah, give it right. a give it a jump ahead. So. If we can get rid of it altogether, that would be great. Yeah. All those in, uh, in favor, favorable action? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Hearing none. Article 9 appropriates 47500 to uh, manage the algae program at uh, Olden Pond. Move favorable action. Second. Any questions or comments? Yeah, just uh, if Ed could mention to the public who might be listening, uh, why the Pembroke Water, or Arthur maybe, why the Pembroke Watershed Association manages this uh, allocation for us? They don't really manage it. Uh, the bill comes to me, and we pay the bill. Um, the Watershed Association is a partner with the town and, and uh, getting the word out when we're testing and treating and all that. Um, but actually, the, uh, you know, the appropriation comes through uh, through my office and uh, the bill comes to my office and we pay the bill. Um, uh, we have a committee, uh, we have the several department heads that are involved, uh, the <coughs> treasure collector, uh, the health agent are involved in conjunction with the Watershed Association. And the Watershed Association acts as a vehicle for um, overseeing the um, baseline measurements and so forth for the bonds and the progressions that we've made over the years. And just as a, uh, for instance, um, on Little Sandy, it, it used to be you could see the bottom at 12 feet. You can now see it at about 14 feet. At Furnace Pond, you could see uh, the bottom at about 8 inches. And it's up to about two or three feet now, and it, it's it's getting um, improvements in Oldham as well. Yeah. So the, the progress is there. It's slower than we'd like, obviously, but um, these were big um, projects to take on for a, a group that started in the garage on Phillips Road. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard anyone questioning that, but if, uh, if someone did, I just wanted to have uh, the, the correct answer. Yeah, we, we have prepared if somebody has a question. Um, so we need a vote on Article 9, on favorable action. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Article Aye. 10 is uh, a uh, appropriation of $12,000 for continuing the algae control program at Furnace Pond. Move favorable action. Second. Any questions or comments? It'll be pretty much the same as Oldham Pond, so um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Five to zero. Article 11 uh, amends uh, Schedule A classification consequent, uh, compensation bylaws <coughs> position of executive assistant uh, and replacing it with the position of assistant to the town administrator. Move favorable action. Second. Uh, question. Question. Ed, uh, will the people with this vote uh, be changing any salary? Is there any dollar value in that size? Well, I believe that uh, th there's a possibility of that happening, uh, and that um, it would uh, necessitate that either a, a, an amount of money to be allocated to that plan, although the alternative is to have a personal services contract with the uh, new position, and that would be funded uh, directly you know, through a contract negotiation. I understand that. Is my The simple question is, if someone votes, a town meeting, if someone votes with this specific article, just with this language, is there any monies attached to this vote? There could be. Okay. There could be. So um, that would uh, definitely be in the explanation that I'll share with the board next Monday night. Right. We're doing this for, for good reasons, and, and I support it, and I'm sure everyone on the board does. But I just want to make sure, sure that questions that come up at town meeting, we know the answer. Questions ahead of time, we can make sure we have well, the answers and the research done. Thank you. Do you put this off for one week, or do you want to approve it? Uh, I, will, I want to approve it. Okay. So we have a vote um, in a second? Yes, we did. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anybody opposed? All right. Article 12 is uh, uh, the, an article to have, uh, have a vote, the town vote to accept the space and need study uh, that was performed on Pembroke Fire Station, Pembroke Police Station. I believe that this is going to be um, taken off the uh, warrant. Have you had a chance to reach out to some of the folks at? Uh, everybody that I've talked to feels that the five minute presentation will be made by the committee at the beginning of town meeting and that this article will be removed. And I believe that that um, the board wishes to hold off on that until October the 2nd. That's fine. Move to table Article 12 to October the 2nd. Second. Second. Article 13, the same All scenario. Those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. 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 Article 13, the same scenario. Um, the uh, DPW commissioners will make a five minute presentation regarding um, their uh, $10 million request, and uh, but it'll be up to them to make a, a decision to the board select by next Monday night as to whether or not they're going to pull this as well. Okay. Make a motion to table to the one week. October second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, Fourteen. Yeah. Article fourteen is a request by the police chief to uh, uh, appropriate the seventy-six thousand eight hundred twenty-eight dollars to add two uh, officers to the uh, to the department. Right now, uh, this appropriation hasn't been recommended by the town accountant or the town administrator. So if you would like to have the uh, police chief in next Monday, that's fine. He's coming in anyway. Yep. Next week. We'll continue yeah, like Article 14 till next week. Move to table for one week. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 15. Okay. Uh, Article 15 is submitted by the Recreation Commission, and they uh, want to delete the position of part-time labor and replace it with the position of labor in case the Recreation Commission wants to hire somebody on a full-time basis as opposed to a part-time labor. And any funds that they would make would come from their recreational revolving account. The hiring would still go through the town administrator's office, I assume, right? Well. So they wouldn't be freelancing. Um, right now, they pretty much have the authority to, um, to hire their own personnel. Where does that authority come from? It's, uh, it's 
been in on been with them as long as they had a recreation commission. Where where does that approval come from? Where where is that stipulated? Yeah, that her, her personnel, the recreation personnel, is in the pay plan, but the hiring authority has always been with the Recreation Commission. And is there any oversight by the Board of Selectmen on who they decide to hire? No. Let's see. I guess after this question really wasn't answered. That it's always happened really doesn't answer how it happens. What mechanism is it? Yeah, through, is it, it may be just through the department head. The department head has the authority to do that. And that, that well, I would think the department head probably goes to the Recreation Commission and will be happy to give the board any messaging or law um, site that, would, uh, that allows the Recreation Commission to uh, to hire their own personnel. I'm going to table this one week. Yeah. I move to table for one week. Second. Yeah, and it, it, in, in my speaking about it, 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 I'm not trying to change it, it just this is a simple question yeah. that wasn't answered. Yeah. Well, the concern is that, you know, we give them permission to hire one and they hire two. If we don't have anything to do with the hiring authority, we've got two new employees that we're obligated to. Yeah. yeah, even the fact that they're going to fund it out of their revolving account uh, doesn't really solve anything. Yeah, really. this is not to disparage the Recreation no. Commission. This is just a, no. a question of uh, personnel control. Okay, yeah. Article 16. Did we... Uh, Question, did we have a vote on that table for one week? No. I didn't. It's, uh, somebody made the motion and second. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, put it off till October 2nd. Article 16. Article 16 is one of the items that the town accountant and the town administrator have recommended to be funded. That would be favorable action. Second. Favorable act. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Got the monkey off our uh, back with that. That's the last one. <laughs> 17. Yeah, this is a request by the library director to, uh, to uh, amend the classification compensation bylaws to <coughs> part time personnel may be eligible for step increase after one year or to take any action. Right now, you, the person has to wait two years for each step increase. This only affects like three people in the department and the money's already been appropriated. Yeah, she came before us on that yeah. issue. So, so you so recommend favorable <coughs> action? Second. Yes, I move the town administrator's recommendation. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Article 18, uh, three recommendations from the Community Preservation Commission or Committee. Uh, recommendation A is $25,000 uh, to be granted to the town administrator uh, for the removal of the concrete uh, cannon supports at the Memorial Park. Wow. I move favorable action. Second for discussion. Is this a repair or is this a replacement or we just repair? Wow. Well, I guess they've got the money to do it, so uh, so we're just on recommendation A? Yes. So is there a motion <coughs> is there a motion on it? Favorable action. Second. Recommendation B is appropriate to some of twenty five thousand dollars. So that in vote. Yeah. You look still need to head off tonight. <laughs> yeah, hot my tonight. apologies. There's no game on tonight, is it? <laughs> no, no. The coffee I had was eight o'clock this morning. Any discussion on this on the recommendation A? 
Hearing none, all those uh, recommend favorable action say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Hearing none, recommendation B? Uh, that's a sum of $25,000 granted to the Department of Public Works for replacement of the fence at Ludham's Ford Park on West Elm Street. Move favorable action. Second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. aye. Anybody opposed? No. Recommendation C? Yeah, this is uh, to add five thousand uh, dollars to the um, Ludham's Ford project that was funded last spring, and we ended up uh, a little short of what um, we needed to complete the project out there with the rec with the uh, recreational tables, the ADA compliant <coughs> benches and signage at the park, and uh, the uh, CPC is graciously added to the money <coughs> that was appropriated last spring to finish the project at Lot of Sports. Move favorable action. Second. Is this uh, just a question there? Is this going to be um, uh, part of this money used for the replacement of the trees that, that it were? It could be. It could be. Okay. Um, any questions or comments? I have a question uh, before we vote, if I may. Uh, how much money do we have in the open space fund? You know? Probably not off the top of your head, but did you think it was a lot of money? Or I'm sure it's enough to cover these. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just want to like, know. This is the CPC's open space fund. Okay. Because they have yeah. categories. Oh, okay. You know, okay, okay. you're and right. And I'm sorry. Yeah. It's probably four hundred thousand dollars in there. Okay. Hmm. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. I'll be happy to give the, the board a report next Monday about what is. Oh, the I was thinking of the. Uh, of the open space, right. not coming under the CPC. Yeah, this is a CPC mm -hmm. category that deals with open space. Right, so, okay, that's my answer then. Thank you. Okay. So you're going to give us a update on that next week? Yeah. Okay. How much money is left in each account? Sure. Okay, all those in favor of recommendation C? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Hearing none. It will be five to zero. Okay. Has to do with the warrant articles. Do any old business? Mr. Chairman, just if I might, if I could ask um, Ed or Sabrina for next week, if we could get a report on the um, total expenses that we've spent with attorneys on the Board of Health uh, matter. I think it'd be an interesting uh, set of facts and figures, especially when we're in budget crunch with the deficit. I had an issue, Mr. Chairman, on yes. the whole business. Uh, last week uh, we had discussed um, the appointment of uh, Lisa Cullity to the Executive Committee of the Plymouth County Emergency Preparedness Coalition. And um, I just wanted to state for the record that uh, a letter to Ms. Collidy from the town administrator has been sent, uh, as we had asked him to do. And the second thing is we discussed last week withdrawing from the Metropolitan Area Planning Council and we uh, decided that we would need to go through the state house to do that. So uh, we asked the town administrator to get involved in that. And we have uh, letters here sent out to Josh Cutler and Vinny DiMacito to get that started. So just a housekeeping issue. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Hearing nothing, a town administrator's report. A couple items that you see on your agenda. Um, <clears throat> the hazardous waste day will be held on Sunday, October the 15th, not the 22nd as previously reported. And the, and the hours of operation will be 9 to 1. And then I received word from Fire Chief Hill that there'll be an open house at the center fire station also on October the 15th uh, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay, so you can 
Sure. Get on the dump and uh, stop by the fire station <laughs> on your way home. That's right. <laughs> Anything for us as workmen? Nothing for us as workmen. New business? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we received a letter from the advisory committee, and it states advisory is enthusiastic about the prospect of working with Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito with regards to the community compact. If the Board of Selectmen plans to establish a committee, advisory would like to be involved and have a member of its committee be included. Thank you for your consideration. Um, to just bring that out um, as a letter we received, but more importantly, uh, I asked the town administrator who has uh, been uh, working with the lieutenant governor on the community compact issue. Do we need or plan to have a committee? I <clears throat> have sent a memo out to all of the department heads that, that, the, that I'm forming a committee that in that regard and that we have materials available to them and I'll be happy to send a memo to advisory inviting a member of an advisory to be on that committee. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. All right. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have an, another thing under new business. Okay. I'd like us to institute a new birthday policy so if, if uh, Ed and Sabrina, you could get a list of each of the town employees' birthdays. I'd like this Board of Selectmen to write a personalized card to each individual birthday and then sign that. I think it's important for employee morale and it's the right thing to do. And if we need a vote on that, I can put that in the form of a motion. We need a vote on that, or is that something you can do? Uh, we can do it. I mean, invite employees to, you know, to list their birthdays. I don't know, you know, some. Well, they do. They list it with the with the uh, town um, collector. Trash, I know that. Town, school, or both. Town. Are we going to include the Board of Selectmen personnel in that <laughs> motion, Mr. Furlong? Absolutely, be everybody. Uh, I would, I would uh, support that, adding the Board of Selectmen, as long as we don't have to add the year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, years will be excluded. Um, I just had, uh, do, you, do you have that? I am. Lukewarm. <laughs> <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> Can I report back to the board next month, I was next week say, on that one? Yeah. Let me see how. That's fine. What kind of reception we get? That's fine. Um, do you you have that letter there that um, I gave you to look at earlier? Sure. Sabrina, I'm just going to ask if you can um, if you can make some copies of this for the board. Um, and this under under new business here. Um, just one second. I just oh, want to just apologies. read part of it. Um, for the uh, for the residents out there, just to to know what's going on, um, and the, under new business, the Division of Marine Fisheries has been talking to Brockton Water um, without any response at all back from them, in regards to uh, a couple of issues there. Um, one being that they're their major pipe that diverts water into the Civil Lake has been broken for a good many years now. It's been addressed um, with Brockton Water on a number of occasions through the Division of Marine Fisheries. It's also been addressed from the Pembroke Fisheries to Brockton Water that um, that that is a problem over there. It definitely is a problem for the juvenile fish, and we have seen adult fish go through the screening and uh, into Silver Lake when they are diverting. Um, uh, Brad Chase from the Division of Marine Fisheries um, has, has been trying to communicate with them and has offered that, that the Division of Marine Fisheries will actually engineer, um, manufacture, and install the new screening and all that. Uh, that's all Brockton has to do is come up with the money um, to to take care of that, um, but they offered to do that the same as they offered to to change and make it easier for um, 
the fish that come up and down the, the fishway that's there. And uh, they've been working with the Pembroke Fisheries for some time. So between Brockton and the Pembroke Heron Fisheries Commission, we have a letter that's going from the Heron Fisheries Commission to Brockton, um, which explains to them that um, the, um, the manager that it manages there um, has been very cooperative with me and the other members of the fishery in order to close the diversion. And we're saying that in here that um, there's been some uh, difficult times, but the person that we work with is, is, has been very cooperative with us, but Brockton still takes the stance of not taking care of matters that need to be taken care of to save the fish and, and to, um, to take care of the problems that are over there. So there is a letter, I'll have a copy made up for each one of the selectmen that's gonna go to Brockton. And our stance is that if Brockton doesn't uh, take care of this and do this, which they can start, start diverting by October 1st, then the Division of Marine Fisheries is gonna take one step further and send a possible demand notice and I think that the Pembroke Fisheries should take a stance and probably go to Superior Court and seek some type of a junction against them um, not to divert any water until they fix the things that need to be fixed to save the, the fish that are here now. Um, unfortunately, we're making observations that, that fish are going through these screens and two years ago the guys took it upon themselves to take the money out of their own pocket and buy a netting to go across the area where the diversion pipe is and stop any juveniles from going in there. Um, so we've taken matters under our own hands and I mean that's how uh, some of the people that are on the Fisheries Commission feel that they want to save these fish. So this letter is going over to, uh, to Brockton and I think that Pembroke should take a stance that um, that we also work with Brad Chase in taking this next step. Uh, if you're not going to do this, then we're going to seek some type of court action against you. So that's what this letter is all about. And like I said, we'll make copies of it so that you can have it. Well, I certainly agree with the sentiment of the letter. So was uh, that being sent to or CC to? Yes, it's also being CC to, um, which we had discussion with um, the Lieutenant Governor over it, so it's going to um, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito to the Board of Selectmen and to Brad Chase of the Division of Marine Fisheries, and it's going to, to uh, Brockton Water. Um, maybe some of the other interested folks, uh, people who are also part of the watershed, uh, surrounding towns, uh, state reps, uh, state rep uh, Tom Calter has been very involved uh, with the watershed area. That, um, and I think that's what we appreciate uh, yeah. being part of that. Uh, have have knowledge of it in case they want to join in. They, well, they probably do. Uh, um, Cutler and DiMacito are already aware of this because we've been working with them, mm -hmm. um, so they're very aware of what's going on here. Um, that that hasn't happened. That Brockton is not doing. Um, you know what they should be doing to assist us, um, and um, and I believe that um, that they may also be aware of uh, Calter's latest bill that was that was in the house, and I'm not sure where that stands now, but that has a very very small segment in there that Calter put in there about um, the div the diversion says now that there has to be 300,000 gallons a day running over the dam into our waters while they're diverting. But it doesn't say that we need 300,000 gallons a day, every day, all year. And by them taking the amount of water that they're taking, last year we couldn't do that. We didn't have enough water to let our fish out. So um, that is part of that bill, but I'm not sure where that is now in the house. So. Okay, is there any other new business? Hearing none, uh, October 2nd on the upcoming issues is the final warrant article recommendations. Also on uh, October 2nd, signing of the town meeting warrant. 
October 10th, the warrant's going to be posted. October 16th, there's a joint meeting with the town moderator, advisory, um, in regards to a special town meeting. October 24th is a fall special town meeting <coughs> and to be announced a quarterly meeting with the advisory committee. Is there a need of executive session? No, sir. Having no executive session, is there any other business? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to mention an issue that uh, I just want to let the selectmen know. Uh, Ed and I have been working for months trying to get a truck exclusion in the North Pembroke area, and we need the town of Marshfield's approval. Uh, we have been trying to get that approval for months and months. I don't even know how many months it's been that long. So uh, after this meeting, I'll be discussing with Ed um, what other action he may be able to think of that we can take that we haven't taken already to try to light a fire under these people. I, I just don't understand what's going on with them. Now, we've gone through the procedure required to obtain the necessary traffic counts to prove that whether you qualify for a truck exclusion or not. And the figures that we have, it's no doubt that we need a truck exclusion. And uh, so I'm going to follow up with him. It's just, it's been so frustrating. It's probably been a year. There's new leadership in Marshfield now. Mike Moresco, who's a former selectman, who did multiple terms on the board, is the new town administrator, effective uh, sometime this week, I think. And he might be worth uh, a call being sympathetic to the, uh, to the cause of the board of selectmen, having been one himself for so long. Good. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, like I said, I'll uh, talk to Ed after the meeting, and uh, we'll decide what what is the next course of action we've already taken several and haven't gotten anywhere so thank you for that suggestion thank you mr chairman okay uh any other business hearing none i'll entertain a motion move to adjourn the meeting second all those in favor aye, aye. Right. anybody opposed all right, that concludes uh, tonight's Monday night meeting of September 25th, and uh, I hope you have a great week, and uh, we will see you uh, next Monday night. Thank you for tuning in.